Okay, now this fella, his YouTube channel name is called The Travelling Clat. And uh, there's one L in travelling and two T's in C-L-A-T-T, -T, Clat. And he has uh, this uh, collaboration video uh, with a guy whose channel is called either The Ask Project, where he asks... I was a conservative for years, and everybody would whisper about the Eskimos, and you know what those people did and so forth. Some absolute cork is there. His uh, name is Corey Gill Schuster, and his YouTube channel has the name Corey and then Gill dash S-H-U-S-T-E-R. If you're a conservative and you know what the Eskimos you're doing, you ought to tell people and discuss it in the open and not sneak around behind anybody's back about it. I think you're going to find his channel interesting. Uh, there's many classic interesting channels that are very revealing about the culture, about the way of life, the, the mindset and uh, the attitudes of you know the Eskimos is now so this particular collaboration video between the traveling clat and Corey Gill Schuster where they both go to discover uh, the truth about the red heifers so uh, these red heifers it's from I suppose Old Testament lore and it is part of what they are now seen to be calling Eskimos heritage rather than Eskimos religious belief which I think is a key point and part of a, a deliberate propaganda or public relations campaign which they are engaging in and I think what they're trying to set out to do is to dispel myths you know and harmful conspiracy theories uh, which perhaps anti Eskimo people are either believing or perpetrating so that, uh, you know, the, the innocent Goyim or Gentiles don't need to trouble their heads anymore, that there might be an end to the world just because of these red heifers. And a heifer is more or less a cow, a female ox, kind of, uh, or of that type of animal. Uh, it's female and it hasn't either been pregnant or given birth yet. Although I see some definitions say only has one calf. But like, I mean, well, talk about, that's not exactly splitting hairs. That's that's a, a massive, uh, broad range of things that it could be. Either it's a virgin or not a virgin. <laughs> like, but it, it seems to be trying to encapsulate both there. But again, it's something that I recognise from the way that they like to sort of keep their options open. They, as in, I'll spell it out. It is because we are being purposefully rotten. Simply people who like to have the opportunity to claim to believe anything as and when it might suit them and then discard that belief if it doesn't or say one thing when the opportunity seems to necessitate it and then claim to have never said that thing when it seems like the time for acceptance of a certain thing is no longer is no longer useful or or, or no longer receptive i suppose i'll move on anyway and get on with this video here it's called the traveling clat i met the red heifer of the third temple the soul of America is being rotted out by germs. And he says, uh, also in the, in the title of the video, Eskimos. Sacrifice coming with an exclamation mark. So I don't know whether he's being sarcastic or, or alarmist. Who knows? He starts off by playing sort of various people's podcasts and high profile, perhaps YouTubers and videos talking about this red heifer phenomenon in... I suppose, excited or salacious even tones. Undisclosed location in Israel. I do want to talk about this red heifer prophecy. So the red heifer prophecy will happen on Eid. The red heifer sacrificed by Israel that have any significance in Islam. But and this is some of the bogus teachings of the Jews. Hamas has just pointed out that they are at least following the red heifer story. By the way, Glenn Beck would know because uh, he is a Mormon. He converted to Mormonism and he... Uh, at the time when he was speaking to, oh God, what's that fellow's name? Who uh, I'm going to say pretended they they made a movie about him. Jim Caviezel played him. Uh, Tim Ballard, uh, or Ballard is it? Uh, he, he, I'm going to just tell you very quickly. If you want to go, you can go watch my video. And JC made a video with me about it. Uh, he's he's a he's a, a fraudster, a, a sham artist. He pretended to go down into various countries countries in South America and rescue kids, you know, from evil militias and whatnot and drug barons down there. 
Uh, there might be some kernel of truth that somebody somewhere did something like that, but uh, all of his stuff is just uh, Walter Mitty at best, uh, but deliberately deceptive. But in any case, um, Glenn Beck, when speaking to uh, Tim Ballard, uh, talked about a book that Tim Ballard had written uh, about uh, sort of Eskimos. end times prophecies and uh, about the sort of raising up of the nation of Israel to being the first amongst all nations type thing. You're probably one of the very few, besides David Barton and me, that get teary-eyed talking about I do, this stuff. I get, I, get, I get emotional. And then what happens? It's not over yet. George Washington comes out and takes his oath, raises his arm in the, in the, in the fashion of a, of a covenant maker, and places his hand on the Bible. But not just on the Bible, but in the Bible. Where he placed his hand told the world and the nation that he understood the covenants of Israel and that he understood this covenant had been imported by the founders into the United States of America. So that's where Glenn Beck, the arch Republican American conservative stands. Uh, Israel is the country that makes his heart sing for joy and his tears weep um, out of sort of Maybe it's mixed sadness and joy, but uh, he loves the country of Israel anyway. That's what he has said. Um, anyhow, let's get on here. I suppose I'll have a little bit of a look at the introduction. So this guy's saying he's he's in the West Bank anyway, in a place called Shiloh. And Shiloh means Messiah, or it can mean Messiah. I am here in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria in the Holy Land, where a bunch of Eskimos are raising red cows. Through these Jurassic Park gates, you can find the red heifers. These are the red heifers that are supposed to bring on the end of days, the end times, and potentially the Messiah. Let's talk about it. That's Corey Gale Schuster there. So Shiloh can mean, as I say, Messiah. And uh, this this breed of the red heifer, I think it's, it's either called a red Angus or a brown Angus. I would not have made it out to see these red heifers today if it wasn't for our sponsor. Yeah, his sponsor Slingshot. for this is Israel Slingshot. I'll just read what it is says here. And I've done another video previous to this, just uh, mentioning them as well. Uh, Join our cause, they say. Stand against anti Eskimos. In a world where social media algorithms can perpetrate or perpetuate bias, your support is crucial. We're on the front lines using advanced advertising technologies to combat anti Eskimos and counteract harmful narratives spread by oppressive regimes. But we can't do it alone. Your contribution keeps our mission alive. It fuels our campaigns, amplifies our voice, and empowers us to make a real difference. Together, we can create a future free from hate and misinformation. Um, they call themselves the Iron Dome. On their own website, they call their, themselves the Iron Dome of Hasbara. And Hasbara is the Eskimo. word for essentially um, spreading propaganda that is in favour of Israel. Uh, it might mean kind of several things, as often Hebrew does. It might be able to be translated directly as propaganda uh, or maybe translated as something like a manifesto or perhaps uh, explaining you know, to, to people other than Eskimos, maybe. Or it could be to anyone, maybe to themselves and then to the, to the, to the Gentiles or the Goyim, as they might call us. He says he, he knew or he heard about uh, the, the red heifers and he wanted to capitalize on it. In other words, earn some money, earn some profit. Uh, this is what most people in the world are motivated by, but it's, I would say that it is the defining uh, attribute, the defining characteristic of the, whatever exactly it is, modern day so-called Eskimos, whether it's an ethnicity or a religion or a race, but I can't say it's them exclusively anymore, but uh, money is their religion. Thank you, Israel Slingshot, for sponsoring today's video. My name is Tal, and I make videos here in Israel. A couple weeks ago, when I realized the hype train on these red heifers was taking off, being the YouTuber that I am, I wanted to capitalize on it. That led me down a deep rabbit hole, learning about an organization called the Temple Institute that wants to full-on build the third temple in Jerusalem. And through that, I was led to a woman named Moria. Moria lives here in the West. So interesting as well uh, that he says he was led to this woman called Maria uh, through this Third Temple Institute. And um, 
well, as we'll see anyway, she is not a farmer, but she's intimately familiar with the cows. She says that they know them. These red heifers know her. And uh, she says that her family emigrated to Israel in 1978, immigrated to Israel in 1978. Uh, it's curious. She seems to me to be not a farmer, but a public relations person. Moria lives here in the West Bank and is the chief content officer of ancient Shiloh, the original Eskimo. capital. She's the chief content officer of ancient Shiloh, the original Eskimo. capital. And as I say, looking up Shiloh, uh, Shiloh holds profound meaning and significance within the context of both historical and biblical narratives. The term appearing numerous times in the Bible encapsulates a range of meanings that transcend its literal sense. Easton's Bible says Shiloh was generally understood as denoting the Messiah, the peaceful one, as the word signifies in Genesis 49, 10. The Vulgate version translates the word, he who is to be sent. So it's the Messiah of the Eskimos. Not Jesus, whoever they're still expecting. They don't think Jesus was a messiah. They think he was just a common criminal who got what he deserved in Ben Shapiro's words. Uh, the revised version margin, till he come to Shiloh. For the city of Jerusalem. And when I got that fateful message welcoming me to come to the West Bank and meet the red heifers, well, my excitement yeah, was on the like next level. And this is exactly how the day went. <laughs> Hello cows. This is what we call holy cows. Holy, holy cow. cow. Holy cow. I could have made that joke. Aren't they so funny? Ha ha ha. It's all a great laugh they're to so them, cute. you know? But they're very they serious. They're deadly serious they do. about this. Yeah. We call them Tikva, which is hope. Geula, which is redemption. Tchia, which is coming back to life. Mm -hmm. uh, Nechama, which is consolation. Sgula, which is like treasure. I love to imagine that one of these cows is named Nechama. That's my rabbi's daughter's name. No, I don't tell her. <laughs> and why is that so funny? Why does she find that funny? I'd love to call one of the cows after my rabbi's daughter's name. Like, what does that mean? Is he calling his rabbi, rabbi's daughter a cow? Why would he do that? Why would they all have a good laugh about that? Or is there something prurient or sexual about it? Like, you know, ha 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 ha. I mean, maybe it's just nerve, social anxiety, where they all pretend to have a laugh to sort of break whatever ice is there. I, I don't know, but it's just, it's odd, isn't it? Okay, Moe, I have lots of questions. I, actually, it's kind of like a surreal moment to be standing in front of these cows right now, because there is so much hype and misunderstanding on the internet about this. So he finds it surreal to be there, but then he remembers why he's supposed to find it significant, because there's, he says there's so much hype and misinformation. And they never really spell out exactly what the misinformation is, but they try to imply that we all think that they're trying to cause the end of the world, like destroy the world, by doing something with these reddish brown cows. How now, brown cow? It's just occurred to me. Uh, maybe that is where it comes from. I don't know. Sometimes these little ditties in poems where we don't know where they come from and they go just go through every schoolyard. Maybe it's... Some fragments of ancient knowledge being passed down somehow through our genetics. Very strange. Maybe there's a culture that gets passed on from the elder kids to the younger kids faithfully throughout time. It's, it's a strange thing. Maybe it's a microcosm of society. Anyway, I'll move on without spending too much time. He wants to dispel these awful misconceptions. He's going to paint us all if we have misconceptions as being anti Eskimo. Well, and roll all that into one. But he thinks that, um, you know, we have these strange misconceptions there is so much hype and misunderstanding on the internet about these cows. hype and misunderstanding on the internet look at these cows man they're so cute these are the red heifers of the apocalypse everyone keeps talking about they don't look so apocalyptic to me right and just to let you know i want to remind you um apocalypse in greek means the revelation let's just confirm that i'll just double check that now apocalypse noun the book of revelation that's number one meaning. Number two meaning any number, any of a number of anonymous Eskimo. or Christian texts from around the second century BC to the second century AD containing prophetic or symbolic visions, especially of the imminent destruction of the world and the salvation of the righteous. Uh, so that's the destruction of the world meaning there in number two. But when we talk about the world, it, oftentimes when we, when we say, oh, the world is like this or... 
you know, you got to use get used to the way the world is. What we really mean is that's a euphemism for you got to get used to the way people are. You or or the world is a strange place. What they really mean is not that nature is strange or or that looking around looks strange. It's that the people in it act strangely and have strange customs and beliefs. Uh, things like that. So oftentimes when you see the world, it's not the destruction of the world, but the destruction of perhaps most or all of the people in it. And that's why it has the salvation of the righteous. So apocalypse could mean getting rid of a lot of the world's population, not destruction of the world. And uh, then number three is the end of the world, especially as described in one of these texts. Well, it's more to do with, and I would say, and they see it this way too, uh, because it's a free Masonic thing as well, in the end of the old world empire. And they need to destroy the old world empire in order to bring in their new world order. So did I say empire? Destruction of the old world order. And uh, Novus Ordo Seclorum, isn't it? Our new world order. So uh, again, I think perhaps the end of the world is a figurative term, meaning the end of old culture is so much so that a whole new world culture comes in. Culture slash religion slash heritage. A great reset, in other words, but not necessarily the end of the world or necessarily the end of a large swathe of the population.